I'm not against person against anybody. I'm against everybody who breaks the rules. Oh, that's me. That's my stance. Fighting words and you know it. This controversy with Keith Poche, Toledo Bend, has everybody out there talking. <laughs> See that? Okay, as cool as TikTok may think that was, it's against the rules. Can't can't go across dry ground. Man, it's been getting crazy. <laughs> Your partner Gerald Swindle has a few things that he wants to say. So hey, let's take a look at it. Let's see. You know, who's right? Who's wrong? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let's talk about it. I always call the tournament directors to ask, am I missing something or do I not have all the information I need to be doing my job? Am I, am I not doing enough? Is there something that I'm not taking advantage of or, or capitalizing on an opportunity? So I did a lot of homework, but the first thing I want to bring up is you see this right here. This is a 2023. This is the Elite Series rules. Folks, it's a bunch of them. So that is the Elite Series rules. I believe Keith Poche is fishing the Bassmaster Opens. Are those rules the same? Hmm. Might want to take a look. I'll put a link in the description for anybody that wants to kind of gloss over those rules real quick and also see exactly what is the area of contention that kind of started the whole thing, guys. But let's go ahead and finish taking a look at what Gerald Swindle has to say. In the Bassmaster Opens, they have a booklet pretty much just like this. And when I agree to fish bass, I sign this. It means I sign and I agree and that means that I know it. I've, I've looked at it, I've studied it. It also means that I will abide by it to the best of my ability. So I've notified them that I'm aware of the rules in here. I play by the rules. No, 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 I'm, I'm, not, I'm not against person against anybody. Okay. I'm against everybody who breaks the rules. Everybody. That's me, that's my stance. I can work with that. All right, so he is not against anybody personally. He is against everybody that breaks the rules. And I guess when you think about it, guys, most of us are like that. We want everybody out there playing by the same rules that we're playing by and to all be governed the same when we're out there. Only fair, right? You got that right. Do you think I have never done something? You think I've never pushed a no wake zone? Or you think I've never ran one accidentally? You got, I have. You think I've never had too many fish in the boat? Had to turn myself in. So I, I'm aware that we've all made mistakes. That's right. I think just about everybody that has been tournament fishing for any length of time has made some mistakes and possibly been DQ'd. Man, and you got to hate that feeling whenever you're coming in with a nice bag and you realize that something just isn't quite right. And just a quick story about what happened to me, um, fishing Lake Eufaula. Had a pretty decent day out on the water. I was coming in as a on the co-angler side and lost track of time along with the boater. We noticed other boats going by and just missed our, our way in time. Just enough to where basically ended up in a DQ. So yeah, yeah, a lot of people have had those issues. It talks about this, but you guys didn't know this. If another angler sees an angler doing a rules violation, it is his responsibility to notify Chris Bowes, Lisa Townledge, Hank Weldon, or, or per the rules, I'm held accountable. It's called policing your own. I'm ashamed of myself. I should be arrested. So it makes me mad when someone puts me in a position to have to say something. And I've done it before. And it, I don't like it. But that's what the rules say. So for everybody who's had their opinion on Toledo Bend, opinion and all of what's happened, unless you sign this or read this, it doesn't really matter. So I would say it does matter in the court of public opinion because these organizations really care about what the viewers are thinking. So all of this talk, all of this controversy, I think it does matter. Look where we're at right now in fishing. Just a few weeks ago, we had someone pull a gun on somebody. Oh, Holy goodness. Stop shooting! They're shooting, guys. They're shooting. Wasn't one of our guys. Was just guys that are fishing at the Alabama River. A guy comes down with a shotgun because people are fishing around his dock. 
Oh yeah, it does get real out there with guns and fishing. This this incident out there at, at Toledo Bend, that was a wildlife management area. It does have a roller system on it. He didn't use it. He jumped it. <laughs> is crazy so a lot of people have been wondering what a roller system actually looks like how does it work so yeah looks pretty simple hmm would that have ended all of this controversy or made it not even exist in the first place okay as cool as tiktok may think that was it's against the rules can't can't go across dry ground Period. That being a sandbar or a road, you cannot take your boat and go across dry ground. Okay. That is one of the main things that has been brought up, guys. That part where it says boats must remain in tournament waters at all times. You can't take it across dry land. Where does it actually say that in the rules, guys? I've looked. I haven't seen it. Make sure you guys get active in the comments. Have you seen it? If you have, put the link in there or put the exact wording that you guys have seen where that is specifically stated. So it may not be stated in the rules themselves for Bass or Bassmaster, but maybe that is actually in the laws to where you can be fined by that. The same way that if someone receives a fine or they don't have a fishing license or some other um, infraction that occurs during a tournament day, you can be disqualified for that. So where the rules may not say that in that rule book that he has, it may be an actual law that is in place that says that you can't do that. And by doing that and breaking that law, now that is grounds for disqualification. See, way back before TikTok and everybody thought it was cool to jump something, I watched two guys, Gary Klein and Randy Blockett, dig into a duck refuge at Old Hickory. Duck refuge. The problem is once they dug in and entered it, caught them, and they did some tricky boat driving with big boats, it drained part of the duck refuge. Oh. So when you enter some a situation like that and you decide to dig somebody's property, and, that, and that's what you run into, and it, it's, each state is different. Is it a trinkle of water? Is it a napkin of water? Is it a dry ditch because there's a drought? But once I go in there and say Gerald Swindle started digging, and I dug and dug and dug and dug and dug to get my boat in there, I have changed the bottom level of the pool I'm trying to enter. Now that definitely makes a lot of sense right there. If we are going out there and we're changing the lay of the land and actually affecting people's personal property. And I would say basically property that does not specifically belong to us. And we do not have the right to change the layout of that property. That can definitely be a problem. And it is a reflection of that organization. So all of these things, pretty much need to be taken into consideration whenever we're trying to go back and review and wonder why cert certain decisions were made. Hope it sheds some light. Good fishing to everybody. I'm not against anybody. I'm against everybody that breaks the rules. Be sure to check out the live streams every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, guys. We get together, have a great time, talk about all kind of hot topics regarding fishing, guys. It'll be a great time. See you on Tuesday.